And next if you're mine, we can get a quick drop right in front of the studio. Yeah. Kind of like how we do it, you know how you get the breakfast club. Yeah, yeah, that's how Hey! Bye bye. Can give me some? I think so many different cities. I don't know what time's on them all right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Want to get away? Yo, thank God your phone automatically updates for you, right? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know what the hell going on. We was just new to the game, so it was just like where your hit record at. You know what I'm saying? So now the us being proven in the mixtape space and just having having established fans and tours, it's a whole different relationship over there. How does it feel different? Because now you now you're like I'm not saying before, but now you got radio play. You, you, I mean, you're it's a whole different market from your mixtape. Yeah, definitely. It do it. It, it does feel different. Uh, we was in the club, just doing club hosting, you know, on the promo run, mm -hmm. and the album was only out a couple days, and I just seen the difference of dropping a mixtape and dropping an album. album. What's like, the difference? Like, it just go further. You know, you got a team uh, supporting the whole release nationwide. Mm -hmm. It just go the further. The exposure's on a yeah. bigger level. Without me doing nothing else, obviously I've been I've been doing my part, but. Yeah, not to take away from your exposure, bro, because before any of this, you was booming. No, yeah. no, but. Nipsey was booming. Thank you for that. But I was just saying, like, you know, I showed up, obviously, and done my part, right. but I always do. Not to sound crazy, so the difference is the team activated this time. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I just seen way more people in that club knew the rocket, words rocket, and it was two, three days yeah. after the release you know what i'm saying right. i was about yeah. to say that because i mean like literally like when it dropped i got a text message and they was like yo nipsey just dropped some fire i'm like oh man you know like let me go to my right. itunes so like with the marketing and stuff because i know like you're like super big marketing into marketing and stuff and did you come up with your own marketing scheme like to figure out which hit you wanted to push out um, I mean, as far as picking records, all of that be um collected. Okay. You know, we we got our picks, and then we we bring it to the team, and then yeah, they got their picks, and then they be like, well, all right, let's go. We we gon' we gon' um. Truthfully, it wasn't no pushback. The ones we believed in, they believed in. They kind of was looking to me on the creative side, like what right. you what you think. What you think? Yeah, yeah right. you gotta sell because it because you already established the fact that you can put out hits and have a fan base so they trust your opinion more other than somebody that they discovered. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So 100%. you already had a track record. hundred percent, yeah. So it's different. Yeah, but it's, a, it's a team effort though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Nick, let me say this. I was at All Star Weekend in LA okay. and the song so the weekend, the song <laughs> for the weekend so was last time I checked. I checked. When every time I dropped that record all weekend long, yeah. the club went up. That's love, so man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate that. Get on my nerves because he needs to all. Get over back in. We gonna get you. We gonna get you. I like so. I wanna talk about that Crenshaw tape. Okay. Now, what made you decide? How many? Technically, do you know how many tapes you sold for a hundred dollars? Well, the night of the release, we sold a thousand of them. Where? Out your trunk? In, in L.A. Out of pop up shop. Okay. In L.A. Yeah. So um, after that, we went on tour, and we did a thirty three city tour for to support Crenshaw. And every every day before the concert. We had pop-up shops and we was running through that's smart some markets we ran through a couple hundred some markets we ran through you know another thousand so we uh we just kept printing them because people kept asking for them did you ever give them for maybe 89.99 no 67 <laughs> 37 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 Nah, because it'll throw off the campaign. It was, it was, you know, it was branded as a hundred dollar CD. So, whose idea I mean? was that, Nick? Uh, it was a team effort. You it know, really it's something smart, I brought bro. to the team, and then everybody added on to it. You know what I mean? It was really smart. Thank you. It bro. showed that this isn't just a twenty two, twenty five. It's not an eighteen dollar mixtape. This mm -hmm. is something that this is a peak work of art. Hundred percent. And it's worth a hundred dollars. Yeah, and yeah. your fans supported it. Obviously, Jay. Yeah. So that's it. Was a really good idea. It was yeah. Really smart. How many Thank copies you, of Jay Z, bro? He bought a um, hundred copies. You know what I mean? So he sent us a wire for ten racks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that was, was that like I was from Jay though. Um, <laughs> Big Jay came. Yeah, all of us I was soon. Right. Um that was crazy for real. I was just in the mode of trying to just stay humble and work. You know what I mean? So I ain't try to get too at first I wasn't gonna tell my team. Cause I ain't I ain't wanna I ain't want everybody to get, get too excited. excited and I ain't wanna seem like we was trying to do a campaign off Jay. Off of just that alone, right. But when he tweeted the the picture on his website, on um, Life of Times, mm -hmm. 
then I'll just, you know, start uh, being more vocal about it. I mean, I don't personally know him, but I feel like he, he sees a bit of himself in you, especially early in your career. And, right. I, and I remember reading an article and that was one of his reasons. He just said he liked what you were doing. He right. saw what you was doing and he respected it. So right. he supported they it. Not independent, you know, at the truck, right. you know what I mean? Sure. Being an underdog early in the game, mm -hmm. you know, ended up flipping it and, you know, ended up taking over and running things. So, um, You're a big dog now. Yeah, you know, that's, I, I took that as like a tip of the hat, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, no, for sure. You yeah. know, Jay always been, um, you know, subtly supportive. You know what I'm saying? Since uh, the first time we ran but, into But no other. songs with them though, huh? Hunter. Nah, we ain't done no music. No no. music. But nah. you've met, obviously. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. So, sure. right. You know, Jay always keep it. Let's try to make that happen, Nick. I would no, like to. I would <laughs> like, like to hear you and Jay on the track, yeah. bro. This first is my first album, man. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Debut. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of weird saying Nipsey Hustles first album. Right. right. That's, you've been around for a long time. I'm going to be honest with you. I may have never heard anything you ever done, but I know who the hell you are, though. That's right. That's and right. that is a major, major deal. Like, yeah. I know Nipsey Hustle, but me and Becky might not know the words to any song. <laughs> you got to work but, on that. But, 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 I, but, I, but I know you. Right. If I see, I can pick your ass out in the line out. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to. Yeah, that's, but, that's <laughs> but I, you know, I know who Nipsey Hussle is. You have branded yourself tremendously. Right. Now, I, I've been working with this, all, uh, this cup. Well, it's a, it's a, how do I put this? It's a group called Urban Specialists. Uh -huh. And what they do is they go into the inner city and they try to pull gang members out of the gang. Mm -hmm. They use former gang members. Mm -hmm. And they don't use the bottom. They go to the top ones that you the may have, guys. you know, yeah. created the Bloods in right. Dallas. Right. Um, you know, they go to the top and they work with them. They give them outlets. And I just started working with them called yeah. Urban Specialists. Yeah. Now, how how was it? How did you make that transition from the gang member Nipsey Hussle to the entrepreneur, the artist, the father that right. you are? How did you make that transition? Uh. I just had, I had some situations in my life that, um, you know, you get wake up calls, you know what I mean? You go through close calls and things where you, you get kind of close to the, to feeling like you won't throw your shit, your yeah, stuff away, you. excuse me. Yeah, what you know do you what I mean? mean? You get cussed. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. I feel like you're gonna throw your shit away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you say shit, what do you mean? Your your freedom, you know, your life, your your opportunity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, you come out them situations somehow and be like, well, I don't like how that felt. You know, when you looking at it, when you when you got your feet on in, the, in them shoes, mm -hmm. it's different than being aware of what could happen and being in the situation of where it's happened. You know what I mean? Like, you in jail, you, you, you ain't got no bail. Not that you don't got the bail money, you just don't got bail because of your case. And right. if, you, if you don't beat your case, bail, right? you about to go on that long road. <laughs> and then you end up beating it, you know what I mean? Or, you be in tight situations where everybody you was around end up uh, washed up or, you know, dead, you know what I mean? Seeing death up close, people you was just with, you know what I mean? Places you just was on your way to. And, you know, reality kick in after a while and you're gonna, you're gonna lay in the bed you make. So I knew that that, that, that wasn't what I wanted as far as the uh, final destination. Right. So I just started taking steps toward what I what I was passionate about, which was the music. Right. And then the doors start opening. I start seeing the results of them steps. And I just followed the, you know, the, the positivity. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's not an easy thing though. That's not, not, not to no, be I wrong think it, No, it's not. It's it's not, not. No, That's why a lot of gang members stay in the game because yeah. it's, it's, they don't they don't know which a direction to go. And you know, fortunately, you have music in, in the entertainment industry, but it's hard. And a lot of times, you're met you're met with resistance. All the time. Was it? Were they, did they try to keep you like, oh, but you ain't going and you're not leaving here? It, it was never that convo, but you feel the, the, the like you said, the resistance. Animosity, maybe. I mean, just like the, you know, gang culture, gang, gang banging is stingy. Right. So, you know what I mean? If you ain't on the block every day, if something take place and you not there, it become like... Why wasn't you there? Yeah, you watered down now, or you know, uh, you, ain't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't on the front line no more. Right. What you doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it become like, my nigga, a, a family man, or that nigga, you know, that nigga a rapper. Like John, mm -hmm. or, yeah, 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 that nigga square it up. And nobody gonna tell you that. If you got a little bit of respect, nobody gonna say that to your face, but you gonna start to feel, you know, the the, the 
people judging what you're doing. Almost resentment a little bit, right, bro? hundred yeah. percent. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know what they say, crabs in the bucket. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, um, you know, I think people don't really, young people that identify with themselves as gang members. When you, when you, when you look at yourself outside of the gang, you ain't really got no other title, no other identity. So you gotta, you gotta, that's that's the hard part too. You know, like you so-and-so from this gang. It's like you recreating yourself. You got to, but yeah. that's not an easy thing too. Cause the gang, you got all type of support and tradition behind that. Right, like your brothers, those are your brothers. Right? And just the, the years and years that it's going on, you were part of something. Right. That been established right. and that family. respected. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So outside of that, it's just like, you just a solo man on a mission with you. And you gotta, you know, you gotta redefine everything. And that's mm -hmm. that's the hard part too. Yeah. And and since you've been out, I will commend you because you didn't just get out and just say, I'm out and I'm good. Can you explain what Vector 90 is to us? Because you you go back and now you're trying to help out in your your, your own community. Well, yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm out of, of my community. I never was. You know I mean, out of the gang. Yeah, I'm not out the gang. You know oh, for saying? real? Nah, you don't get out of the gang. Truthfully, you just, you, you redirect your energy. You know what I'm saying? So wow. I'm not a gang banger. But you still rolling sixties. Yeah, that ain't nothing you gonna ever put down because if you ever put it down, you never was a part of it. You never was really down. Yeah, that ain't that ain't how it works. You don't just hang up your rag and say I'm not I'm not from this community no more. But at the same time, you know, demonstrations speak louder than conversation. Mm -hmm. So I ain't in cars going on missions no more. I ain't, I ain't in the spot. You know what I mean? I'm I'm. On a radio run, dropping my album, you know what I mean? Building, building businesses, Getting back employing my here. employing my homeboys, you know what I mean? And paying taxes. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. 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 You ain't using that on that. <laughs> <bitch. laughs> <laughs> What's it like paying taxes, man? <laughs> oh, man. I wanted to say, like, speaking that's, on your, uh, like, that's community. Hard. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, that's part of you, my bad. He's like, yeah, I had to get used to paying ahead, taxes. Uh, um, speaking on your, like, community and, like, your upgrading, your upbringing, you're a uh, Habisha, right? You're Eritrean. Eritrean, my Eritrean. Dad's from Eritrean, yeah. So has that played any part in like, I guess your progression as, I mean, not even just as a hard as just as a human and coming from LA and now, you know what I'm saying? Like you're seeing the world mm -hmm. and getting all these perceptions of what's going on and like absorbing everything. Has has any part of you being Eritrean like affected you any, like any, any, any part of you, you know? Of not to sound silly, but what is that? It's a country in Africa. Yeah. It's, oh, okay. it's where my dad grew up at. It's in East Africa. And what so, is it? Say it. Eritrea. Eritrea. Oh, I dated yeah. a guy that was Eritrean once. Yeah. You been there? Yeah, for sure. Out. I've been. I, I went out there for three months. Um, in 2003, and um, you know, met my granny for the first time. Met my cousins. That's cool. Yeah. So it definitely had a, a, a major impact. I was raised in LA by my mom. You know, my mom family Black American. Yeah. But when I, I always knew my 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 heritage from my dad yeah but i never met my family my dad was the only one in america everybody else is back home so when i went out there it uh it educated me to the other side it opened your eyes bro 100 you know what i'm saying it just gave me an understanding of what my dad life was like growing up and you know what i mean what his family was like and i got embraced and they loved me you know what i mean and i just was like you know became aware of the, the culture that I'm, I'm half American, half Eritrean, so I'm yeah. equally, you know what I mean? As much as I am a black person from America, I'm a black person from Africa okay. too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I embrace both sides of that after I went out there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When you were there, did you have, uh, is it Ingera? In Ingera? In Ingera. In Ingera? I had that in here. I grew Can y'all speak English? In Bune? Bune? <laughs> I, I grew up on that. Even out here, my dad always cooked. And Jared is a type of bread, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, oh, okay, bread. Kind of yeah, like bread. Yeah, it ain't yeah. got no yeast in it. So if you ever read the Bible, and they said like unleavened bread, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's what they was talking about. Oh, wow, I didn't yeah. think you can make bread without yeast. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, it's, it's, it's definitely- um, I'm dealing with a yeast situation right oh, now. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. We're not going to claim that. Oh, yeah. we're, not, we're not going to claim that. It's natural. No, we're not going to claim that. No filter. No filter. So, Nipsey, a lot of people don't know that you, you not only are you in the music industry, you have a couple of businesses, right? Most definitely. Most definitely, like yeah. you, uh, you're a hair salon owner. Not a salon. We we got a um um a company called Elite Hair, mm -hmm. and it, it sells, you know, um, bundles. Exactly. Yeah. Why you ain't bringing no bundles, nigga? They got it on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. You can't even give a discount on a hundred dollars CD website. You can tap in. How'd you tap? How long you been selling bundles? Man, like two years now. 
And, who, um, who got you into that? Truthfully, I was in the county jail. My boy from Compton told me, man, it's better than dope, Nip. You know what I'm saying? You're going to triple up off the hair. You go to India and, and, and get the, the kilos of it and, you know, put it, spool it up Still and pack using it. Still the, the hustler uh, lingo. I got, I got laced. You know, he told me about it. Then my brother came home as well and, and, and had the same... Um, curiosity about the about that game and just you know put together a bag and, and went out there and you know invested and you still got it popping 100 percent. yeah it's right on slots it's called elite hair wow yeah. Yeah. okay now speaking of your brother tell me the story about who, who's that that buried the hundred thousand dollars in your mom's backyard well, my brother buried two hundred fifty thousand he buried two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in your wow. mother's backyard yeah and then tell me what happened and um you know he put it in like an airtight fireproof safe mm -hmm. wrapped it in plastic you thinking it's gonna survive right he left it down there for like a year probably mm -hmm. and then when he, he dug it up you know um i guess the moisture of the earth really got in there yeah and it, and it molded the money oh you know my god so like a hundred bands out of that 250 was molded was destroyed. yeah and, um you know that's a hard loss when you're young. He was a teenager. A yeah. teenager? Yeah, early. Money is a teen. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, my mom was in there. We had the blow dryer out, all the money on the living room table, trying, trying, to, trying to dry the money. What's your mom say? She was she was empathizing with him. She was, she was sad. He took a hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's just like Don't worry about it, baby. Trying her best, you know. We're gonna do this. Yeah. yeah. But he bounced back, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I, I talked about it on the album just as like a um a nod to, you know, you might think it's the end. You might think this is losses you can't recover from it. And mm -hmm. we ended up doubling up doubling down it. and then in there, son. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And now you you got a project coming out with YG right now, right? Or nah, is that nah, is nah, that nah. just talk? They just, you know, I had an interview with Billboard and he asked me about the F Donald Trump record. Yeah. And I told him that that came from a session. That song came from a session when me and YG was working on a collaborative studio. project. Okay. And, you know, that ended up becoming a headline for an album on the way. So. And, so, and you've heard that, right? What? They even got a title to it, America's Most Wanted. Yeah, yeah that's what we was going to call it. But, you know, we promote Victory Lap. YG right, worked on yeah. his solo album. So I ain't going to spin the story on to what's coming. They could wait and chill and see how that goes. I was wondering, yeah. yeah, like why would you even, you know, even talk about the do that when you still doing your debut nah, it, album? It just got took out of context. You know, people be trying to make their own headlines. Not to say the interview they from, hits, from Billboard, bro. but yeah. just the the actual magazines and online that ran with that little piece. They took it out of context. So we was working on a collaborative project. Mm -hmm and we got F Donald Trump mm -hmm. and that became a big record. We shot a video for it. He put out his album with that on there also. I was working on Victory Lap and uh, we kind of stopped doing the collab project because the world took us to go promote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, um, you know. So it's kind of like on pause maybe for something maybe. It's, just, it up it's later, just an maybe. idea. Gotcha, it's a, I got it's you. It's an idea. That's just being creative. Yeah, and you know what I mean? It's something that might come together one day. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it if it does. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear you talk about what about Vector 90. Vector 90. What is that? Because that is that has to do with st a STEM project for the kids in Crenshaw, right? That's that's one level of it. Yeah. Um, it's It opened up February 15th. It's mm -hmm. a... It's a um, it's a collaborative effort between a real estate developer and entrepreneur in LA named David Gross mm -hmm. and myself. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a 5,000 square foot compound. The top level is an inner city co-work um, incubator. So what that means is like 10 offices, you know what I mean? Um, that people from the community, entrepreneurs, they got businesses. They can come and use office space. They can rent the office That's space. Dope. Oh, dope. Yeah, dope. and then, and then um, you know, it's like modeled after WeWork, but it's based in the community. WeWorks is all over the place, but they're not in the inner city. You know You're what I mean? in the inner city. And so this is right around the corner from my store. This is in the, in the heart of our community, and it's fully renovated, upscale, you know, marble floors, tabletops, glass installations. It look like some, you know, very, very next level quality. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's the top level. And it's also an incubator, which means that these, these entrepreneurs every year, we're gonna fund one of their one of their companies. Wow. And, oh, okay. Yeah, so, so you pick one of the people in the building. They make a pitch, kinda of like Shark Tank. Shark Tank. Yeah. Every twelve months say, we, we say what you working on and they come make a pitch and one of them we going we gonna fund and, and do their they round A of investment. Oh, and then the bottom say. level, thank you. Bottom level is the STEM center that you was talking about, science, technology, engineering and math. Mm -hmm. And it's um, you know, it's for young kids to, to bridge the gap between the inner city 
in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of grades did you get in high school? High school? Did you go? I did go to high school for ninth and tenth grade, and I, I I was very capable, you know what I mean. But I wasn't I wasn't focused on on academics. Mm-hmm. I remember, you know, I, I had F's and D's every semester except one year, and my, my one of my English teachers was like, "Bro, you smart, like, you know what I'm saying? What you doing?" And I just did all my homework and focused for one semester and got like five A's, two B's, just because I, I peaked game and he was he was he was interested in my 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 well being and he was sincere. So I was like, I'm gonna meet you halfway, and I did real well, and then I stopped going to school. And After just, that, and just yeah. pursued music. Though. I wasn't just like hanging out outside. I was, I was really. You pursuing. was focused on something. Else. Yeah, early. Yeah. But you're still like a bookworm, because I know I hear you talk a lot about the book Contagious and like what mm-hmm. it's done for you. Do you like any other? Because I'm a bookworm. So do you like any other like fiction books or like sci-fi books, maybe mystery books, nah. like porno books? Nah. What? <laughs> porno books. <laughs> 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 yeah, you gonna you might as well just, just like some, the marketing type books. You gonna read porno books? Born up, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, I ain't really into like fiction, sci-fi like that. I'm more be into like reading Business. about people, you know, people, oh, psychology type, real thing, or just like you know, people that you know they've been successful, but you don't know all the details of their life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just read their story, or um, you know what I mean. Just game, just just different, different, different versions of information that I feel you could apply. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. Yeah. You know? Well, what back to um, Victory Lap? What's your favorite track off there? I know you've been asked that plenty of times, but it changes right now. My favorite record probably Blue Laces too. Mm-hmm. You know, that's because it's, it's it's a powerful song to me. Um, the intro, I really love the intro. The title track, Victory Lap. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the record with me and Belly and Dom Kennedy. It's called Double Up. Me too. That's your joint. <laughs> yeah. I like that one, and I really like rap niggas. You like it? Yeah, I yeah. like that one too. I like rap niggas. Too. You do, huh? Yeah. That's right. That's, more, that's my girl favorite too. Oh wait, a minute. I haven't heard the song. I just like rap niggas. <laughs> oh, you like rap? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's all. You in, you in, you in the right <laughs> job. You got the right position yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah she does. Song. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> we, gonna, we gonna turn you off. <laughs> I saw at your oh, uh, album release party that like everybody was there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. So like everybody was there. And I was like, dang, uh, I saw the picture you posted on Instagram with AI. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, like, I feel like anytime I see AI in a picture, it's just like an epic moment. Yeah. So it made me wonder, like, if you could have, like, your own basketball team, like, what? Of you rappers. Just, of rappers. Well, I was no. gonna say rappers. I just came in on her the question. Right. I was just gonna have a rap basketball team. Well, there are some, there are yeah, the that too. That could ball, though. There's a couple. That too. Rappers. And what what would the name be? Like, like, what would My the name team. of your team be? Yeah. I don't know what the name would be. I might call it. Um, the RSCs, the Rolling Sixties. The Rolling Sixties, right? Good. And who be on it? Who who be your five men? Like it started. NBA, I'll go get the top five. I'll no, go, not NBA. A rap, like rappers. Yeah, rappers. rappers oh, man. <laughs> or even, even actors, well, maybe. Well, we just found out that uh, uh, Offset was it Migos? Quavo. Quavo, Quavo, Quavo. could ball. Yeah, I seen that clip. Yeah, he was going crazy. Uh, who else could ball? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know. Two Chains really played basketball. Yes, he two played chains? college. Yeah, he played college. He played college. His knees look a little ball. He might have dusted. I used to. We, we had a game in LA during All Star, and I was trash. I realized I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew when you was like, you made that shot, but nah, the cameraman I didn't, I didn't, I didn't just caught it. the. I yeah, you missed it, but the yeah. cameraman caught the shot, and yeah. you was like, switch. Nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The release was good. The release, I was trash. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, you know, I still got my my little finesse. I could dribble my shot when down the toilet though. Mm-hmm. You know, Cruz. You know what I'm saying? Keep all right. the game over. Yo, yo, what girl that you gonna lose it? Uh-huh. You might get a girl off your crib. You do. I swear you, to God. I, that's how I you got my dude. Rolling twenties, Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> yo, I was dead. I was like, yes, my name. Hey, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. I don't even think you're bullshit. No, I'm not. I'm not. Sam Hayward, Rolling twenties, all day. Hey, parent. So, uh, yeah, I want to see. Let me just see what you got, Nipsey. That's asking a lot. Come on, please. He never know you're gonna call me. It's not your team in the moment. He wants some fruit. We're gonna throw your joint on. Man, listen. We're gonna talk about the album. Oh, his mama named him Nipsey. I'm gonna call him Sweet Feet. Nah, that's not my real name. That's that's a rap name. Oh, well, yeah, your mama named him Nipsey. I knew that. But what's your name mean? My real name, it means God will rise. It's Hermes, though. That's how you say it. Oh, that's his name? Hermes? Hermes, yeah. Hermes. Yeah. His mama. How do you say your last name? Askadon. I was like, how? Yeah. Did you say Ask a Dog? That's yeah. sexy. Yeah, okay. That's and, right. No, I'm right. You could have went with that. That's sexy. Yeah, that's good. I feel like you could have went with your real name. 
Um, I could That's have. too hard. I could I have. I don't know. Nowadays, just, I'm going to be answering questions a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yo, so I just found name, out bro. a few years ago what my name meant, too. You know, the whole I, time. I didn't I didn't, I didn't, didn't know it had a meaning behind who it. Who brought that to you? Who, who uh, one of my homegirls. We were just riding around. And she was like, what do your name mean? And I'm like, it's just an African name. It don't got no meaning. She like, you sound crazy. She Googled it. Yeah. And she <laughs> like, look, nigga. <laughs> and I was like, damn, that's powerful. Yeah. God will rise. I mean, I mean a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. That just happened for you? Now I was probably like 27, 28 a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No. Well, Nipsey, it's so nice to meet you. I like mean, what? For real, you you are a true testimony of putting your brand to work. That's right. Like, you know, you have been in this game for a long time, yeah. and you have been a factor in this game for a long time. And for this to be your debut album yeah. is phenomenal. Thank you. Like, that means you're putting so much work in before the work. Absolutely. You put a lot of work in before no the work. Question. So if you don't have it, go get it. Victory, Victory Lap. Lap. Yeah, yeah, grab that. Stream it, download it. It's available all streaming platforms, iTunes, in CD stores, retail, whichever few that's left. You, you know what I mean? It's getting it's getting it's getting like <laughs> he's not, yeah. he's not even have you to say it. Yeah because you're used to saying pop my trunk, pop up shop, oh, yeah. mixtape, in the trunk yeah. at the house with the CD. We still, we still at the trunk too you see me in traffic you, you, you can buy one from me man. I might charge you a little more for it. I bet you would. You know, <laughs> we got I bet you day. you're a true husband. Yeah no problem. Alrighty thank you Dipsy. Thank y'all appreciate it. Yeah. Go ahead.